Welcome to our Yang and Yin practice for today. It's going to be a 45 minutes practice. So I know it's quite difficult to really focus when you are at home. That's why we have schools. So when you are at home, you are always having the telephone or this or that. So try to find a moment for yourself. A moment to just completely energize or re-energize for the rest of your day. <clears throat> if you have any issues in your body, any injury, please listen to it, observe, and then always take a second option. If you think this is not right for you, then try to find another way to, to get to the point where we want to go. <clears throat> Other than that, let's just try to do this together. So, we're going to start today in a just a sitting position with your legs crossed. You can sit on your heels if you want to. <clears throat> if you have a block or a bolster, please do so. I use them. I use a bolster myself because I want to elevate my hips a little bit higher than my knee level so I can maintain my spine neutral without effort, completely relaxed. So I can find a relaxation here in this pose. So let's for a moment check your spine, it should be neutral. And then come into your shoulders, take them up and then to the back and then let them go down toward the floor. So you lengthen away your ears from your shoulders. And now you want to maintain your chin parallel to the floor. And if you wish, close your eyes for a moment. Relax the muscles on your face. Here we go. Completely relax. Take a moment to arrive into your mat. Moment of silence, stillness in your body. Feel the sensations in your body. Start making a space between each vertebrae, so elongate your spine up toward the sky. With every inhale, just lengthen, grow toward the sky, make yourself taller. On every exhale, I want you to find and be aware of your foundations. In this case, the body you are touching onto your mat with your legs, your sit bones, your knees, your thighs, your feet. Let's uh, bring your attention into your breathing. Deeply inhale and exhale through your nose. Try to elongate, but find an even length in your inhale and your exhale. For example, you can go with four counts up, inhaling one, two, three, and four, and then you exhale again one, two, three, and four. So try to find an even length in your inhale and your exhale, and see if you can maintain that um, attention into your breathing during the whole practice, either in, either in the yang and the yin part. In the yang part, if it's in your practice, you can also start with ujjayi breath, which is the um, yogi breath, victorious breath, we also call it. It's done by the gentle constriction of the back of your throat creating this audible sound of the breathing like the ocean waves. Bring your hands together in front of your heart center. Take a moment. Maybe set an intention for your practice. An intention can be physical, emotional, or spiritual. Gently open your eyes. Maintain your gaze soft as much as you can. And then slowly bring your arms overhead. Inhale. And exhale, you're going to turn to your right side, placing your left hand on your right knee, and your right hand goes behind your back. Inhale to lengthen your spine. 
claim a space between the vertebrae. And then exhale deep in the trees over to your right side. Maybe looking over your right shoulder. And then inhale in your arms overhead. And exhale, turn to your left, bring your right hand on your left knee. With the left hand go behind your back. Inhale to lengthen your spine. And exhale to deepen your trees. Inhale in your arms overhead. Exhale, cactus your arms. Inhale. Exhale, cactus. Inhale. Exhale, lower your right arm to the floor. Crawl away, walk away with your fingers and lean over to your right side. So try to maintain both uh, seat bones grounded and soften your right elbow. Maybe looking up to your left or arm, or if it's too much for you, maybe you can always look down to your right, or you can just gently move your head side to side. Your choice. Inhale, bring your arms overhead. Exhale, lower your left hand, and then walk away with your fingers. Crawl away, soften your left elbow, and lean over to your left side. So your right seat bones wants to come with you, but you want to keep it grounded. Once more, you can look to your right or to your left or just to move your head a little bit. Go back to the center, inhale, and exhale, lower down. We're gonna find our way into all fours, which is a table pose, so you come onto your knees and your hands. <coughs> and then you're gonna bring hands underneath your shoulders your knees and then your hips. So let's try to find that square table we all we need. And then we go for a cat and cow. You're gonna inhale. And then what you do, just draw your tailbone up toward the sky. Your chest comes forward. Your collarbone goes to the front. Now you can either stay here with your uh, neck or you can maybe look a little bit up and then exhale, round your spine. So what you do is tucking your tailbone under, draw your belly button against your spine, round your back chin to your chest and look to your belly button inhale one more time so drop your belly and then tilt your pelvis so tailbone is going up collar going to the front exhale round your spine tucking your tailbone under look to your belly button inhale one more time Exhale, try to synchronize the breathing with the movements. So elongate your exhale. And this time we're going to hold here. Engage your core muscles. And then from here, go to neutral. Excellent. Take your left arm to the front, your right leg to the back. Inhale to lift for a core stability. Exhale to hold. Flex your right foot. So what you're doing with your right foot flex is pressing back with your heel. So your right leg is energized. Inhale, exhale, elbow to knee. So just connect your elbow with your knee and hold. Inhale to reach out with both arms and legs. And then exhale, you bend your right knee and see if you can touch your right heel with your left fingertips. Now try to square your shoulders and hips. Inhale, and exhale, come in, connecting your elbow with your knee. Inhale, try to move mindfully. Exhale, bend and touch your heel. Square your hips, square your shoulders. Inhale, and exhale, gently release. Let's try the same onto the other side. Take your right arm to the front, your left leg to the back. Inhale to lift and hold. Exhale, flex your left foot, hold. Energize your left leg. Inhale, and exhale, connecting your right elbow with your left knee. Inhale, reaching out, exhale, bend your left knee, touch your heel, square your shoulders and your hips. Inhale, reaching out, exhale, elbow and knee connected. Inhale, reach out, exhale, bend your knee, touch your heel, square your hips and shoulders. Inhale one more time and exhale, lower down to the floor. 
tucking your toes under. And take your knees off the floor, off the, off the floor about 10 centimeters. Inhale, exhale, sit to the back, toward your heels. And then slowly elevate your hips. And then shift your weight forward and sit back down into your table pose. Beautiful. Sit back to all your heels. Elevate your hips gently. And come back one more time onto your floating table. Sit back to your heels. Elevate your he hips up toward the sky. And back into your table one more time. And one. And two and three and four, excellent. Inhale, exhale, extending your legs, keep your heels up, 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 don't lower your heels yet, not yet, not yet. Keep your heels off the floor. Lower both heels to your right side. Pressing gently with both feet, gently onto the floor. But we are sideways. So just feel how the intercostal muscles of your left side on your rib cage is the opening. They are very happy that you are doing this at the moment for them. Inhale center and lower both feet to the other side, placing the sole of your feet on the floor. And now you are opening the right side of your rib cage. So again, the sole, both feet are flat and grounded on the floor. Now inhale, bring both heels up, and then what I want you to do is to create this funny wave in your spine, coming up into a plank position, and then slowly lower all the way down to the floor. And top your toes, roll your shoulders to the back, come up into mini cobra, take your hands off the floor, take your feet off the floor, stay strong, and then take your arms to the back, then you go a little higher with your chest, but your spine, your, your neck is not uh, compressed, looking to the front, but you're looking down towards the floor. And then bring your hands about your shoulders, gently release, tucking your toes under, roll your shoulders to the back, inhale, exhale, sit completely toward your heels, elevate your hips, come into a plank this time. All right, sit back one more time, elevate your hips, Come into a plank one more time. Sit to the back. Elevate your hips. Come into a plank. Hold into a plank for four, three, two, one. Inhale and exhale. Sit back to, uh, sorry, Adho Mukha Shanasana, downward facing dog. Now you're gonna press gently with your heels onto the floor, maybe one by one. You can wiggle, you can pedal. You are looking at your belly button. Make sure there is no tension in your neck. Just take it very, very slowly. It's our first downward dog. So take a moment. And then from here, see if you can press even deeply, deeply with your arms towards the floor. Take your chest down and toward your toe there, reaching out. Bend your knees, look into your hands and crisscross. Do a zigzag walking toward your hands. Very slowly, take as many steps as you want. Once you arrive to your hands, see if you can line up your fingers with your toes, soften your knees. Now try to have your big toes together and your heels slightly apart. Make sure there is no tension in your neck. Cross your arms, hang in there for a moment. So you're gonna engage your core, and slowly roll all the way up, one vertical at a time. Good, roll your shoulders to the back. So in the previous two practices, we did um, the classic sun salutation. We also did our um, Surya Mascara A, sun salutation A. So why not we take today our sun salutation B. Um, every time we go through Chaturanga, you can always place your knees onto the floor if that is too intense, all right? So let's do a few rounds of um, sun salutation uh, B. So check your alignment, maybe you can try to find your neutral pelvis and from the neutral choose tiny, gently, posterior tilt of your pelvis to 
minimize the pressure on the sacrum region, which is in the lower spine. So instead of standing in this way, try to stand into a neutral and a little bit to the front. Try to relax or put your hands by your side. So we're going to start with Utkatasana, the chair pose. And then let's work really gentle and with harmony into your body. So come down into a squat, swing those arms, fingertips onto the floor. From here, elevate. So you can have your arms apart, which is fine. Look at my tailbone, tucking your tailbone under. All right, so look down to your toes. You should be able to look at your toes, otherwise you are too far to the front with your knees. If this is available, connecting your hands and look up to your thumbs. Oops. All right, and then come up, inhale. And then slowly exhale into Uttanasana, forward fold. Add the Uttanasana inhale, which is halfway lengthened. And then exhale, you're gonna step into a plank. Now, here is your choice. Choice number one is to lower your knees onto the floor or to join me into Chaturanga Dasana. So gently hug your elbows in. You can have your knees on the floor, right? Or as much as you want. And from here, you can make a choice to go into upper facing dog or into Bhujangasana Cobra. Exhale, Adho Mukha Shanasana, downward facing dog. So all those variations you need, please do so. Just listen what is right for you. Now you're gonna engage your core muscles. Now you're gonna step with your right foot between your hands. Good. Lower your left heel onto the floor. Our alignment is heel to heel, a straight line. Your right knee stays on top of your ankle. Inhale, bring your arms all ahead into our warrior one. So your hands can be apart if you wish, if it's better for your shoulders. If not, you can have your hands together, relax your shoulders and look up to your hands if it's available. Your back leg is straight, your right knee is on top of your ankle. And then exhale, lower gently down, lifting your left heel off the floor and transition into your plank position. Once more, you can place your knees on the floor or completely in a plank, lower chaturanga, half plank. And from here, transition into bhujangasana or cobra or upper facing dog, your choice. Exhale, Adho Mukha Shanasana, downward facing dog. Once more, energize your core muscles and take that left foot in between your hands, so bring your knee into the front, step forward, lower your right heel to the floor, and then coming up into warrior one, inhale. Be aware of the foundation on your feet. Make sure your left knee stays on top, hands can be apart, together, relax your shoulders away from your ears, and maybe looking up to your hands. Back leg is energized, and then slowly lower down, step back into a plank position. Once more, you can bring your knees to the floor, or come with me into a plank, into a Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. This time we stay here for three full cycles of breath. Remember the Ujjayi breath if it's in your practice. Looking at your belly button. No tension in your neck. Bend your knees, look into your hands. And let's just walk forward. Inhale, halfway length in your spine goes straight. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees deeply into a squat for the chair pose. Bring your arms up and forward. Line up with your ears, tucking your tailbone under. Look up to your uh, toes so you should be able to see them. Maybe you can connect your hands and look up. And then come up into some sticky heel. So you bring your hands in front of your heart center. So we do this one more time. Here we go, gentle. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. 
Tuck in your tail, look up, relax your shoulders, look, make sure that you are not too far to the front of your knees. Exhale, lower down into your Uttanasana. Add Uttanasana, inhale, halfway lengthen. Step into a plank position. Hug your elbows in, again, lower your knees, or come into Chaturanga with flat plank. Inhale, Bhujangasana, Cobra, or upward facing dog. Exhale, Adho Mukha Shanasana, downward facing dog. Engage your core. Stepping with your right foot between your hands. Lower your left heel to the floor. Line up heel to heel. Rise up into Warrior One. Inhale, square your hips. So you want to send your left hip to the front, your right hip to the back. So you kind of square your hips, look up. And then exhale, lower down into Chaturanga and Asana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Shanasana, upper facing dog. Exhale, Adho Mukha Shanasana, downward facing dog. Get your core stepping with your left foot between your hands. Lower your right heel to the floor. Rise up, warrior one, inhale. Sending your right hip to the front, with your left hip to the back. Maybe your arms apart or connected. Exhale, lower down, <clears throat> Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. We hold here once more for three full cycles of breath. And then tie the front of your thighs. So you protect the back of your thighs, your hamstring. Observe the pressure. You are applying your hands onto your mat. They should be even in every point of your hands so that you are not pressing too much on the left or on the right or in the back. Try to find an even pressure in every point, every corner of the palm of your hands onto your mat. Bend your knees, look into your hands and gently walk forward. Ara Uttanasana, halfway lengthen and then Uttanasana, forward, forward. Bend your knees for Utkatasana, chair pose, inhale. And then exhale gently, come up into Samastiti heel. Excellent. Bring your arms by your side, Utkatasana. Energize your left leg, so create a strong foundation on your left foot. Activate the three points of your foot onto your mat and take your right knee up gently and your arms overhead, inhale. And then exhale, stand and start. Energize your core muscles, maybe point your toes, looking at your toes, dristi to your toes. Bend your knee, take it to the back. Swing the arms to the back into a crescent lunge. Inhale, bring your arms overhead. Exhale, swing the arms to the back. Create this nice diagonal from the crown of your head all the way down to the right heel. Energize your back muscles, your arms. Inhale, bring your arms overhead. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart center. And then gently turn over to the left, placing your right elbow on the outside of your left knee for our first twist. Inhale, and then exhale, bring your thumbs in front of your heart center, pressing with your left hand onto your right. So you are looking to the back of your mat. Observe what is happening with your back leg. So basically what you are doing is pressing with the back of your right knee towards the sky, straightening your right leg. Beautiful. Inhale into a crescent. And exhale gently lower down. Take your hands onto the floor. Extending your left leg for pyramid pose. Maybe flex your left foot. And press down with your right heel onto the floor maybe. And then shift. Lifting your right heel. And then you press with your left foot. Again, gently just kind of swing and ro rocking on the, on the ball of your feet and on your heel. And forward one more time. And back. Inhale and exhale forward fold, deepening onto your left thigh. 
It doesn't matter how deep we go. And then gently lower down into a rank lunge. Excellent. Plant, plant your hands onto the floor firmly. And then inhale, lifting your left leg up for a three leg dog. And then exhale, lower down gently one step at a time. Just take this into a plank. Lower both feet to lock both heels to the right, lifting your right arm, uh, left arm up, forgive me. If this is too hard for you, you can always lower your right knee onto the floor for a modified side plank. Your choice. Either it's modified side plank, let's stay with the full expression of side plank. And then lower gently your right arm to the floor, lifting your right leg up, inhale. And then exhale, bring your right foot all the way between your hands. And from here, transition to the left. And then come down onto the back of your mat on your left leg for a side, a side lunge. And hold. Now, we have two options here. Either bring your hands in front of your heart center, or just take your left hand underneath your left shin and take your right arm up toward the sky. Look up. Now your right foot is pointed up to the ceiling. Maybe your left heel is grounded or not. It doesn't really matter. And then come down slowly. And then turn to the back of your mat. Excellent. And then from here, step back into a plank. Lower your knees, chest, chin onto the floor. Ashtanga Namaskara. So maintain your hips elevated. And tuck your toes, roll your shoulders to the back. And coming up into Bhujangasana Cobra. Beautiful. Find your way into your downward facing dog. Bend your knees, look into your hands and gently walk forward. Inhale, halfway lengthen. And exhale, forward fold. Rise up, inhale, Udo Hastasana Toma. And exhale, bring your hands by the center, lower by your side into your Utkalasana. Create a strong foundation on your right foot. Elevate your left knee up toward the sky, arms are going overhead, inhale. And then exhale, extend your left leg, energize your core, standing stand. Bend your knee, step to the back into a crescent lunge. Inhale, arms up towards the sky. Exhale, swing the arms to the back. Inhale. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart center. Lean, just gentle, and twist over to your right, placing your left elbow on the outside of your right knee. Inhale. And then exhale, press with your right hand to your left to deepen your twist so you can bring your thumbs in front of your heart center. Maybe look into the back of your mat. Inhale, come up gently to a crescent. And exhale, gently release your hands down towards the floor. And extend your right leg for a mud pyramid. So inhale, you're going to lower your left heel to the floor and your right foot is elevating, your toes are coming up towards the sky. It's like rocking motion on your feet and then come forward, exhale. You do it again, rolling back. And forward, one more time. Rolling back and hold, inhale and exhale, deepening on to your right thigh. Excellent, coming down slowly into your right leg. Plant your hands onto the floor, lifting your right leg up. Inhale. And exhale, lower down, bring your right foot onto the floor. Hold. Come into a plank position. 
lower your heels to the left, bring your right arm up, hold, try to energize your obliques, lifting your hips a little bit higher, more than neutral. If this is too much, lower your left knee onto the floor for a modified side plank. Now stay with me and hold. Then lower down slowly into a plank, lifting your left leg up. Inhale, really high. And then exhale. Come all the way to the floor between your hands. And then turn it to the right side and then shift to the front of your mat. Sit onto your right side for a side lunge. Again, the options, bring your hands together in front of your heart center, then to your left foot is pointed up or not, and then see if you can take your right arm underneath your shin, and then you take your left arm up and look up to your left hand and hold. And then slowly turn to your right, Bend your knees gently, lower yourself down onto the floor, arriving into our gym practice. So we're going to do from here in a very gentle way, just bring your right knee next to your right wrist, right hand, and then point your toes when you left and slide your left leg to the back. Now before we settle down into our pigeon, you walk back with your hands and look over your shoulder that you have your left foot lined up with your left hip. Excellent. Inhale, lengthen to the up. And exhale, either stay here into your hands or for arms onto the floor. Square your hips, avoid collapsing onto the right side. If you need to place a pillow or a block if you have underneath your right hip, please do so. If not, just stay here or maybe if you are able, Reach forward your arms, placing your forehead onto the floor. You can stay here for a few minutes. So try to find and listen to the sensations in your body. So try to feel what is happening in every part of the body which is involved with this asana. For example, observe what is happening with your knee, if the sensation in your knee is too much. So what you want to do is to come up a little bit backwards. You always back up and then try to find a way where you don't find this sensation. And maybe you can flex your right foot a little bit more and then see what is the difference in the sensation. Otherwise, if it's getting too much still, you can always bring your right foot a little bit more underneath your pelvis so there is not too much um, twisting in your knee, all right? Because of the stiffness of your hip. If that is too much, you can always lay down on your back and go into a recline, into a recline pigeon. So I'm gonna show you, just stay where you are if you are in a pigeon. You can always place your right on your left and hold it in this way. So we're also opening your hip joints on the right side. If you do what I'm doing now, try to maintain your tailbone down, to pointing downwards so you flatten your lower back. So it's very important you work with the sensations in your body, right? That we just don't continue ignoring Sensations in your body is a communication. It's the way your body is telling you this is what is happening. So you need to listen to it and then adjust to what is going on. All right. So you have now the two options what I gave you. So you decide which one is going to be for you. If you find your mind wandering around with your thoughts, try to reconnect with your breathing. Remember, our breathing is our bridge to a mindfulness practice.
you slowly go back into your hands if you are on your forearms. And then from here, just gently tucking your toes under, uh, your, under of your left foot and then lifting your hips up gently. And just extend both legs into a downward dog. And feel the difference while it's happening. Beautiful. So let's transition to your left side, very gently, very slow. If you need to lower your right knee first, just do so. Placing your left knee next to your left hand, left wrist. Walk, slide your right leg a little bit backwards until your body is telling you, okay, that's enough for me. And then come up slowly and claim some space. Inhale, look over your right shoulder and your right foot is aligned with your right uh, hip. And then exhale, come down onto your forearms if it's available, or you can always use a bolster or a pillow or a glove to place your arms onto your knee, um, just lower down. All right, this is good enough. Please stay there. If not, then slowly come with your forearms and feel what is happening. Make sure you do not collapse onto the left. So you try to remain with your hips lined up parallel to the floor. The hip girl should be, that, that ring that we have around, should be like neutral in reference to the mat. Now, if, you, if it's available for you, you can walk away with your arms and place your forehead onto the floor or onto the mat, or onto the bolster or block. Now, in this asana, it's very important that we pay attention to our knee. In this case, your left knee, what is the sensation on the left knee? Because maybe sometimes we're very stiff on the joints, so that goes very intense for your knees. So what you wanna do is to back up a little bit. Once more, if you, this is too much, you can always lay down and do the recline pigeon, which is laying down on your back. So this time you will place your left foot on top of your right knee and lay down on your back. It's very important that you listen to the sensations in your body. Observe your breathing. Sometimes it's more uh, intense in one side than in the other. That is completely normal. The most important is that you don't have this sharp or electrical light Pains. If you do so, you need to immediately back up from the exercise and find another option. And sometimes just the asana is not for us. So let's be honest, honor your body, embrace what you can, and just, you know, let it be without any judgment, just... Go back into your hands, tucking your toes under from your right foot, elevate your hips up into a downward facing dog, placing your left foot next to the right, and just feel the difference. Maybe you can pedal a little bit your legs, wiggle around to loosen up. Excellent. As long as your knees onto the floor, come down onto your belly, in the front, and then elbows underneath your shoulders. And then your hands can be open up to the sky in a sign of letting go and also receiving. Now from here, what you can do if it's too much compression in your lower spine, sometimes we're a little bit too stiff on our lumbar region. So what we can do is to bring your arm, your elbows a little bit more to the front to minimize the, the pressure. But if this is fine with you, just maintain the sphinx. Nicely night up. I want you to observe what's happening on your shoulders. That you're not compressing, you're not sinking into your shoulders. Try to relax your abdomen. Allow your organs just to be there, loose, without any pressing in with your belly. Your spine is neutral from the thoracic and up towards your cervical spine. So you don't want to have too much uh, looking to the front. You should not actually not look to the front. But try to maintain that neutrality in your cervical spine. And completely relax and let go in this asana.
Once more, relax as much as you possible. Try to find this giving up, surrendering feeling into this asana. Observe the sensations in your body. Exhale, press your hands, uh, place your hands onto the floor, flat onto the floor, and slowly lifting up for five, four, three, two, one into the ceiling, and then slowly lower down and come up into a child's pose for a transition. So we do not stay here, we just find our way in child's pose to transition into our next asana. Excellent. So after this rebound, after this counter, you're going to lay down onto your back. Lay down nice and relax onto your back. Find your way into your Shavasana. <clears throat> so in Shavasana, we take a moment to make sure there is no tension, any, any tension left after your practice. So try to lay down completely on your back. And... Um, Feel the sensations in your body. The palms of your hands are facing up to the ceiling. Your feet are kind of letting uh, fall sideways. So your hips are a little bit open and relaxed. Palms of your hands are up, so your shoulders are also open and relaxed. And then close your eyes and let it go for a moment. Search for any tension. Scan through your body beginning from your feet and up towards uh, your thighs, your hips, into your torso, chest and back, shoulders and arms, your neck and the muscles on your face. I advise you, if you have the time and the space, to stay in this asana between 5 to 10 minutes. Allow your body to absorb take in, to integrate, to understand what just happened into the practice. So I will thank you very much and I will um, end my practice with you and uh, I wish you a fantastic day and thank you very much for joining me. As I said, please stay in your Shabbat if it's available for you. Namaste.